Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Unfiltered. Pastor, again, always good having oh, you here. Oh, thank you, John. <laughs> uh, today, Pastor, I wanted to talk about, it seems like everybody around, and, and even people in our church, going through financial difficulties due to inflation, gas prices. I went and put gas in my car the other day, and, and I couldn't believe the, it's so expensive. Is this your way of asking for a raise I, or what? Oh, that was my angle. In front of everybody? That was, <laughs> oh, that not, was my in. <laughs> not good, John. <laughs> and, you know, with rent and mortgages, people can't even move or it's just difficult all the way around, Pastor. And the economy's plummeted and unemployment's high. And, you know, this is not a, a, a podcast on economics, but this is Bidenomics in its finest form. And, you know, and, and for us people in the church or the person that's sitting in the pew every Sunday or on Wednesdays, as a pastor, how would you talk about getting through these financial difficulties? You know, we've always had uh, financial situations. The church has never been without them. I mean, from the very beginning, when we look at the book of Acts, it speaks concerning the fact that there were members of the body of Christ who had nothing or very little. And uh, so the church, because these were members of the church, these were people who were fully involved servants and all. They, they weren't people who who would just drop in and say, can you help me? These are people who actually were recognized people in the fellowship who would go through needs. And so what happened at that time is the, uh, the fellowship would uh, work together to help those. There was nobody in need, the scripture says in the book of Acts, right? And so from the very beginning, there's been difficult financial times, especially under persecution. Mm -hmm when people were being driven out uh, of their their uh, cities that they dwelt in and losing their occupations and all. This is something that the uh, the book of Acts chronicles it, it, in many places and and points out that, that there were those within the confines of the church who would be like a Barnabas who sold property, donated it, and gave it for the well-being of those in need. And Paul has given us various scriptures related to meeting urgent needs and and things of that nature. So how, how do we deal with that? We've always had to deal with that. Um, when Paul was writing to the Corinthians, he said, there are not many noble amongst you. There are not many wealthy. There are not many mighty. There are not many people who are of the higher financial streams in your fellowship. So what do you do? Well, you learn to live with what you have, by and large. That's something that that I, as a, as a boy, growing into a man had to learn from my father and his example. You don't spend money you don't have. You don't go places you can't afford. You learn to do with what you have and you do the best that you can. You, you do something that many of us do. You budget. You, you put away this for that, you know, and you live the best that you can. And if it means you don't live in the way that you'd like, you know, having a nicer home or a better car, you know, which is, there's nothing wrong with the desire for either of those. It's just living within your means and doing what you can um, and seeking the Lord to, as you're faithful to Him, as you serve Him. And, um, you know, I, I, I had to learn that myself, uh, and I, I still practice that, John. Uh, when, our, when our church first was, was, was birthed, uh, we didn't have uh, the old saying is two nickels to rub together. We, we, we didn't. We had a house payment. We had uh, a vehicle payment, insurance, upkeep, gasoline, you name it. We had all that. We still do. We have different payments we make. And I learned very early to live on what I had, mm -hmm. not on what I wish I had. And so I don't know that we can ever really look to, to man to provide for us. I certainly don't believe that we should be those who go to the world to say, support us. We need to go first and foremost to the Lord and Amen. seek Him. We need to check our hearts to see where we really stand with Him. Those are things that are prerogatives. And we need to do with what we do have. And um, I, I don't look to the government as being uh, the one who supply my needs. You know, my God shall supply all my need according to his riches and mercy in Christ. So I rely on the goodness of the Lord and the faithfulness of God's people. You know, people don't understand that, that pastors, if they're full-time servants of the Lord, they actually 
rely on, on the generous support or the faithful giving of those whom they, they serve. Mm -hmm. For some reason, this stereotype of every pastor apparently being a thief or mm -hmm. somebody who's living better than the average person and all of that, that there are some who do, there's no doubt about that. But um, not all do. The overwhelming majority of, of pastors uh, understand what financial need is and, and we have to rely on the Lord. We have to trust in Him. When, when COVID hit, the bills didn't stop. Right. And people don't realize that churches like ours well, we have a, a number of uh, upkeep um, needs. We, we have, have a number of, of people who rely on uh, finances that are uh, donated to, to live on. You know, they, they gave up their secular work to serve here. And so we paid these, uh, these people a salary. And just because COVID came didn't mean that our mortgages didn't have to be paid or food wasn't having to be put on a table. So what did we do? We did what we do. We trusted the Lord and God has always been faithful Amen. and he supplies. And so I don't rely on Bidenomics because that's just a catchphrase that when looked upon with closely, looked at closely, you can see this is a charade. The, the prices have gone up by poor decisions that this man in his cabinet, I don't even think he makes the decisions. I believe he has uh, progressives who tell him what to do. I mean, just the other day he was on TV saying, uh, this is what I've been told to do, and he's standing <laughs> in front of the world saying that. So he gives it away all the time. This is a man who's not in control of anything, including himself. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, I can't look to him to strategize something to help me right. because he's moving us to socialism. And uh, so no socialist uh, who's at the top uh, ever is hungry or ever needs a ride they always make the money off the people and the people who have to suffer. So I don't look to man, I look to God. Amen. Well, thank you, Pastor, for sharing that because I know there's there's people in our pews that are even wondering where we're going to get our next meal from and, and they're turning to the Lord. Amen. And the amazing thing about the Lord is He's undefeated. He, he, he always supplies our need according to His riches. Amen. We need to understand that. it's We learn to walk by faith and not by Amen. sight. And if you see someone with an urgent need, the body of Christ will meet that need. Amen. Well, thank you guys for tuning in. We do want to invite you to our Sunday morning services at 8.30 and 10.45. And Pastor, you're going through the book of uh, Acts chapter 10. Yeah, will be this I'm going to do my best. <laughs> it's been a rich study. So we'll invite you, your friends and family to come join us. We look forward to having you guys. God bless you. Pastor David, again, thank you for your time. Of course. We'll see you guys soon.